Um, what's the latest with Rui in his eye? Um, yeah, he has a severe uh, case of uh, pink eye. I guess that's you no know, you call it. Um, just going to monitor him uh, day to day. He's out for some time now. Um, blurred vision, sensitive to light. Um, but other than that, he, he feels uh, he's, get, he's getting better. Just going to take some time. Just going to, you know, all, the eye doctor said um, it's a severe case and, you know, we just have to be patient. John? Uh, yeah, is that going to move Denny into the uh, starting lineup or have you uh, figured out and what do you expect from him? Um, two different um, positions where we've been treating Denny. I mean, he's played a little bit of the four spot, but like most young players, we want to keep it pretty simple and give them just one assignment to work, work on. And he's been primarily being that small forward position that, that he's been you know, really looking very good. So, but we have some options. We haven't decided yet. Um, we got another couple of days before we play Philadelphia, but we definitely have some options and it's, it's, it's too bad, but it's that, you know, next man up that we have to step up and, and fulfill it or fill it in by, by a com committee. Alif. Hey, Coach, hope you're well. And apologies if you've touched on this earlier, but with preseason now over, you know, what are some things you've, you've managed to learn about uh, this new look team of yours and how are you sort of juggling expectations with the season ahead? Yeah, I mean, we want to we want to compete every night. We've added we've added some uh, really good players. We've added some toughness. We added some size. Uh, you know, we signed back one of the best shooters in the world and, and Bertans and and Russell and Brad's leadership is really, I thought, We've made some pretty good improvements as this uh, preseason has gone on. And I, I think that's going to continue to happen. And there's so many similarities with those two guys. Uh, they're all about winning. And, and this is going to give all of us a chance to, you know, when we, unfortunately with Rui's situation, but I, th I think we can be able to manage, manage that as best we can. But we, we have a very competitive team. Uh, this is, this year, not like last year at all, where the minutes, a lot of the minutes were, let's face it, a lot of the minutes we wanted to establish an identity and a lot of the minutes were developmental minutes. This is different. We got some really good players that, that are ready now. And so some of the guys that maybe played a little more minutes last year probably won't play as many more minutes last year, but that's a good thing because that means we have a better team. Robert? I think you're still on mute, Robert. Sorry. Sorry about that, Scott. When you when you came into the NBA 30 years ago, Charles Barkley took you under his wing. Um, and the NBA has obviously changed. Happy with that either. <laughs> the NBA has no, obviously changed. It, Sorry, the go ahead. Changed, the NBA has changed a lot since then, and obviously with COVID, things are a lot different now. With Denny being a 19-year-old from uh, from Israel, is there anybody that has taken him under his wing? Anybody? And the other question would be the maturity of Denny. Uh, and it sounds like you're going to start him. Is he more mature than most 19-year-olds? Um, I, I would say so. You know, he's he, he's been playing um, with men you know, back back home and Maccabi, the, the team. That's a high-level team, well coached. A lot of good players. He started playing with that team. I think he was a little over, you know, 16, not quite 17. So, but it is, it is a challenge. There's no question. I think we have some pretty good leadership and our coaches have done a really good job of trying to keep it as simple and just keep it focused on just chipping away of getting better and of what we do thing. But Brad and Russell has been great. Just a quick little story after practice today, Russell's doing an event, um, uh, in a Christmas event for the community and handing out gifts. 
And after practice, he, he grabs Danny and Cash, our two rookies, says, you guys are coming with me. And he said it with so much force. And, and Danny was like pleading with him. I got things to do. I just got done practice. I want to do some more shooting. Nope, 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 no talking. Come on with me. Jump in the shower. Let's go. We're leaving in 15 minutes. Uh, so that's, that's, to me, that's leadership. Uh, so he, he, he's going to, you know, 10 years from now when, when Brad and, and Russell's retired, they're going to realize that my rookie year, I had two guys that really taught me how to be in this league uh, the right way. And it, it's so important. All, the, all of our young players, potentially, we could be starting 19, 21, and 23 years old in our front line if that's the way we go. When, when Rui comes back, but it's important to have good leadership and, and we have it. Ava. Scott, as usual, I'm late, so apologies if you, if you already said it. I know. I got time for you. <laughs> um, have you specified I'm who? Early today, so. Yeah, yeah so I'm on time, is what you're yeah. saying. <laughs> um, well, on the John Wooden scale of, you know. <laughs> yeah. So. Is on time, on time is late. Um, have you specified who's starting at the four in place of Rui? No, I mean, we, we're going we're gonna to do it. I mean, it's probably it's going to be by, by committee. Uh, we have some options for those guys. I don't want to give it up yet. Uh, but we actually, today, we, we changed that spot in a lot of our scrimmaging. So um, we, still have some, we still have another day and a half, two days. So but we do have some pretty good options. And then for Rui, who's, who's spoken so much about how last year was, was really stop and start for him, and that was something he kind of had to learn to work through, how much of delivering this news or when the medical staff did is making sure his head stays in the right place, and even if he's not able to do work, he's kind of improving with what he can? Yeah, I mean, right now he can't do anything with, with blurred vision and light sensitivity. You know, I was hoping when first, you know, last week, thinking that, you know, it would, it would clear up in two or three days. He can be back on the court. A couple more days later, he'd be back. But he has a severe case. Um, it's a long season. I know sometimes when you're in the grind, it doesn't seem uh, every game is so important and so critical. But it's um, and he's a young player. He needs these. He needs. He needed those reps in practice and training camp and, and exhibition games. But he doesn't. We're going to have to figure it out without him until he comes back. He's not. He's not happy with what the what the, what the doctors what the eye doctors um said but he understands and my job and the, his teammates job is to keep him keep him up um, when the when the blurred vision and the light sensitivity kind of subsides that he can get back on the court and and do a few things slowly and before we get him back full speed chase did you have another yeah um scott is Rui contagious, and how are you guys handling that? Yeah, I mean, I'm, sure, I'm sure early on he was, but um, I give credit to to all the uh, everybody in our building. Everybody, I mean, everybody in our building. We do. I mean, we are diligent, and it, to a to a point, it just seems like man, we were afraid to even get close to one another. But um, the hygiene and the social distance and the mask and the coaches. We do a pretty good job, and so, but nobody, nobody has it, uh, and we're we're pretty pretty good with that. So that's good. I mean, I'm, I don't know how. I mean, I'm not obviously don't know all the details on how many days are you contagious. But I'm sure there is a few days, but everybody's good. Um, first of all, I think a lot of people are gonna watch. It's my first NBA game. Uh, not not a lot of uh, it's not happened a uh, long time. So um, I think a lot of people will, will, will keep up and watch. And I, I think the whole nation is behind me. So everybody's supporting from back home, wishing me good luck every night. So uh, for sure, there's a lot of people watching. And I don't think um, they, 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 have, they have like a good expectations. I mean, they want me to succeed. They want me to be, to be the best I can. They want me to have a good debut. But um, at the end of the day, they know it's, it's my first game and, and everything will come along eventually. Um, and we need to be patient as well. So either either I, I do good or not, it's, it's, it, it really doesn't matter. I'm looking at the long term, but hopefully I can have a, a good game um, against Philly. Did Omri give you any uh, hints of what to expect? And I don't know how much you've been in touch with him. 
I mean, before I left Israel, I talked with Omri a lot. Um, he really showed me everything I need to know and really talked to me deeply on those on those things. And and other than that, he just he knows me. He knows I'm gonna do my best. He knows I'm gonna work hard. So um, he's not worried about me. And he, he he's always there to answer my answer my questions. And, and, and I appreciate him. Um, but yeah, he trusts me. So. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Ava? Rui Scott told us that you um, were kidnapped by Russell to go to his event, which um, is good. I'm just wondering I don't, what- I don't hear you. I don't hear you. I don't hear you. Can you repeat it? Yeah. Um, Scott told us that Russell took you guys to his event um, a little bit as a surprise. Just wondering yeah. kind of what that part of your life is looking like so far in DC. What's life off of the court like for you? You probably don't have that much free time, but um, what's that look like? So I'm, I'm, I'm really driving behind Russ right now on my <laughs> way there. So. <laughs> um, um, how is the outside life? I mean, I'm not a party guy and, and, and going out a lot, but I, I really want, I really uh, enjoy having fun. And it's not something that I experience right now that much because of COVID. Um, I'm going outside sometimes to eat in the gar good restaurants, but other than that, uh, city is kind of closed. So um, we'll go through that and hopefully every everybody's going to be okay and, and things will go back to normal and, and we'll see how, how is that going to turn out. But other than that, yeah, I'm just chilling at home. Denny, can you drive? Sorry if that's a silly question, but how have you been getting around? <laughs> um, I'm I'm working on driving. Um, <laughs> it's not going to be an easy process because I, I don't have a lot of experience in 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 the U.S. of driving. So um, we'll we'll see how that's going to go. But um, hopefully soon I will I'll be on and, and drive on my own. Good luck. Thank you very much, Chris Miller. Public service announcement, everyone. If you see Denny driving, just give him space. Let that man figure this out in the States. Hey, hey don't, um, don't get me in trouble, guys. Don't get me in right. trouble. Denny, I, I've been impressed in the three preseason games with you finding different ways to impact the game. This most recent game, you had 10 rebounds. Are, are you a, a rebounder that, that we didn't know about You know, playing overseas? And, and can I just describe that part of the game? Um, I always liked rebounding. I always, uh, always knew um, sort of where the ball lands. Always had an instincts for rebounds. But um, you know, as I got here, um, I got experience of this role that I came to Maccabi, my old team, as as a sixteen year old, and and I needed some some somehow to fit to fit the game. I have great players around me. I'm a new player. I need to develop and improve, and that's why I, I do what I know, you know. I'm, I'm not doing anything that I'm, I'm trying to prove anybody. I'm just doing what, what I need to do and, and what's going to help the team to win. I'm, I'm just being myself. But um, for sure, I need to be patient. I need to work hard. Um, and in and, and the end of the day, I just want to have a great season with, with uh, Washington. So, um, yeah. Thank you. Drive safe. And I don't know if Thank you've you. ever heard this, but if you put your hands on the steering wheel, it's called 10 and 2. Just... Both hands on the steering wheel. All right, but All right, I got you. Thank you. You guys, you guys learned me how to drive, huh? Quentin, sorry. What's up, Denny? Hi. Well, um, my first question for you, and I know it's a lot of stress going on. You got your first game coming up, but Russell dropped his new Why Not 0.4s this morning. Um, what are your first impressions about that shoe, I know you got a lot of swag and you like to, you know, you're stylish. What are your impressions about his new shoes uh, that he just got? Yeah, Y'all questions today are funny. <laughs> about the shoe, I didn't see the shoe. I just came, I just woke up this morning and just came to practice. I didn't know he dropped the shoe, but um, if you let me see it, I'll tell I'll tell him how is it. I, I mean, I mean, I, I think Russ, Russ has, a, has good style, so I'm not worried about how the shoe looks, so I'm just, Hoping it's comfortable and, and, and we'll see. Maybe I'll rock those in, in the next game or something. I don't know. 
in uh, my second question for you. Yeah. Um, what teammate of yours can you point to that you think you've grown the closest to since you've been a part of this Wizards team? Someone that you could really say, you know what, this is a guy that I, I see as a true friend, somebody that I can lean on. Um, really, everybody is good with me. Um, I can say two guys that um, came from the same situation as me, and this is um, Cassius Winston and um, a Anthony Gill. Um, those guys are really close to me, and, and we all figuring it out together. I mean, AG came from Europe, Cassius came from, from college. Um, so we all trying to support each other and, and, and be there for each other. And I think we're going to be great friends throughout the season, and, and we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna have a great path to success, though. Yeah. Appreciate you, Denny. Thank Good you. luck. Thank you, thank you. I was going to take a few more here. Uh, ben? Hi, Denny. This is Ben Mittelman, hey. Channel 12 News in Israel. Hi. I'm great, thank you. Uh, Denny, now that the preseason is over, I wanted to ask you, in what space did you find it hard to adjust in the three preseason games? Where do you think it was more difficult for you to adjust and to, to get along with your teammates? I didn't really see something. Um, we didn't play with our whole squad for two games. And then the last game we played with a whole squad, with our whole squad. And you, I thought we were connected with each other. We, we enjoyed playing on the court together. So, um, you know, every team is going to, even the most, the most, like the team with the most chemistry have some, going to have some struggles sometimes. So it's, it's part of the game. It's part of life. Um, but in the end of the day, I think we're a great team and we have great chemistry around us. So I didn't really struggle to adjust. Joshua. Hi, Danny. How are you? Hey, Josh. You forgot their introduction a couple of times. Okay. So. I have to do it. Danny. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> You'd like to have Sai C to do that on uh, Wednesday night, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Danny, you know, I saw the video before of you wishing uh, your teammate a happy birthday, and you led the cheer. Um, didn't you feel intimidated? Yeah, I, what do you mean? I you, the cheer. you know, how yum yum who led it, what do you right? Mean uh, no, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, you, just, you, led, you, led the birth, you led the birthday cheers for your teammate, yum yum who led it. And... Didn't you feel a little bit, yeah. uh, you know, overwhelmed all of a sudden? Here you are, the center of the tension, trying to, you know, here you are in front of all the veterans, and you're the one leading the uh, the cheers for uh, for your teammate. Had, you know, is that just coming naturally for you that you're a, a you know, self born leader and already trying to make your imprint? Um, Hey, Joshua, you you know me. Uh, we we've been we've been around each other, and uh, I just felt comfortable. And and you saw you saw wherever I went, um, I was just confident. Those are players like me, and and those are people like me. And I'm just want to have fun, and I love my teammates, and I love where I am. And and any time that I can make my teammates smile and, and feel better, I'll do it. So, uh, for me, I'm not I'm not shy of anybody. I'm not scared of anybody. So. Whatever it takes for me, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm gonna do it. So, you're the best, Danny. Good luck. Thank you, thank you, John. Lewis. Yeah, uh, Danny, I'm bouncing off that uh, question about the birthday. Uh, what's it been like sharing some of the Israeli culture with your teammates? Sharing some of the Jewish culture? We saw the video of you lighting Hanukkah candles. Um, did you feel a kind of an ambassador to bringing that culture to the U.S. and to your teammates? A hundred percent. I I truly uh, talk a lot of great things about Israel, but I didn't. I still didn't bring my culture yet. So hopefully, throughout the season, I can bring it, and we'll see. Maybe they're like gonna like it. I don't know. But um, for now, I didn't really have the chance. We have so much on our 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 head today. So um, what, what, it's gonna come slowly. What would it mean to bring your culture to, to them? If you haven't done it yet, what would that look like? I mean, the food, the songs, um, I don't know, just the habits of, 
that I that I had in, in Israel. So um, all, actually all around. So um, when I'm gonna have the chance, we'll probably do it, and maybe it's gonna catch. So you never know. And if you can drive in Israel, you can drive anywhere. <laughs> You're damn right. You're damn right. <laughs> Couple more quick ones for you, Denny. Fred. Hey, Denny. How you doing? How you doing? Um, I am. I'm curious. Now you're going up against an entire league of players you've never played against before. How are you going about learning personnel habits, all of that stuff, so you're not totally shocked by everybody when you play against them the first time? First of all. I watched in the past. Uh, I, I know a lot of the players. And, and of course, I'm going to learn the personnel. We have um, just learned the game and don't worry. Without, we're all coaching staff and, and, and all around people. Um, I'm, I, really, I really don't worry about knowing players. Uh, hey, Denny, um, in the three preseason games that you played, what did you learn about the NBA actually getting out there and playing against NBA players? Um, I learned it's a very fast-paced uh, game, um, a lot of positions, um, physicality, a lot of, a lot of great, um, great players around and, and very, very smart reading the game, very good, and a lot of skill in this league. So, um, yeah, you know, I played professionally before, so it's not something I'm shocked, but um, it's, it's, it's definitely a better league. And then, of course, I'm going to need I'm gonna need to adjust. Danny? Danny, how does it feel when you know a whole country is behind you? Is it is it a bit stressful also? Could it be stressful when people have those very, very high expectations from you all throughout Israel? You know, it's it's not the first time that that uh, the nation is behind me and supporting me. Uh, I played I played games before, but um, I love our our country and I love our fans and and, and I love the people support me and really care care of what I'm doing. So for me, I'm just gonna represent as best as I can. I'm gonna do as best as I can. But uh, people also not, need to understand that um, they need to be patient and I need to be patient. It's not gonna come in one day, and I'm not gonna score 40 in, in one day and and um, it, it's, a, it's a progress. So um, I'm just hopefully everybody um, going to enjoy the, 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 um, the experience like I, like I do. And um, that's it. I'm just going to represent. Ish, is it your extensive beauty routine that, that takes us long after practice? Is that what it is, skincare? No way. I'm, I'm always like that even after games. I get in the cold tub, I get a massage, cold tub. It's 11 years. I'm trying to play for like year 20, possibly. Who knows? But uh, yeah, I, I take a while. And then after that, I put on lotion, deodorant. I'm, I'm all over the place sometimes. You got to keep it fresh. Um, I'm, talk to me about the, um, the three-guard lineup that you guys had on Saturday. When did uh, Scott kind of introduce that in training camp? And it looked like it was a lot of fun. Did you enjoy kind of running with those guys? Yeah, if we play it fast, I'm having fun. I, honestly, though, I um, I didn't I didn't know what to expect. I just coach called me in at the six minute mark uh, for Russ, and then uh, me and I will have been playing a little bit together in practice, um, and so we have a good we just kind of play off each other, and then uh, he left Russ, he brought Russ back in, and and then had. Uh, Rolo and uh, TB and, and I'm sorry, uh, DB first. And then uh, Troy came in and we just was playing fast. I, I mean, try to keep it as simple as possible, especially uh, with that unit and in the second unit. Um, defensively, it's huge for us to climb into people and then just play super, super fast. Uh, and I'm glad we did play that well because the game before I wasn't happy with uh, how I played just the pace and the flow of the game. And I still wasn't 100% happy uh, with my play. But I thought that we we really brought great energy and, and juice, and uh, that's how we have to play. Thank you, Ish. Thank you, man. Fred. Hey, Ish, what's going on? What's up, Fred? Uh, how how good do you think your guys' offense can be this year? I think it'd be really good. Um, you know, offense was never our problem last year, uh, so. Uh, 
I think even in the three preseason games we played, we we made strides defensively, uh, but offensively, I think the sky's the limit. Once you start seeing guys, you know, DB's been out, get his rhythm. Uh, Brad played his second game since what was it March? Uh, you know, and, and so and then everybody else is getting their flow. Russ is getting his flow. Myself, like a lot of guys that are getting their rhythm and their flow. Um, so. Hopefully, you know, we're, we're playing like a top 10 offense. Um, and, and that means um, my first unit is playing at a high level and our second unit is playing at a high level. And, and that's what, you know, how we have to play with great pace. But it can be really good. Uh, and I think defensively, we show some strides in these three preseason games. Chase. Ish, um, what stands out to you about the, the depth on this roster? Yeah, we're uh, we're deep in a lot of positions, um, and that's why it's huge. And when you get your minutes and you out there playing, you play with great pace, you play well, and you play hard, you play smart. Um, because depth is never a bad thing. Um, that's for coach to figure out. For us as players, we have to put that pressure on coach to play well every time we hit the floor. Um, so he's constantly trying to figure out um, who we should put in, what should work, and what should not. And uh, it makes everybody hungry. Um, and, and, com and competitiveness is, is really good. Um, I've always thought that. And, um, and, and so it's going to make us all compete, compete at a high level. Uh, but depth is, is really good for us. Uh, and, and it forces you to play well every time you hit the floor. Quentin. It's good, Ish. Keep it up, Ronnie. Um, I know, I guess, no, I'll start with this one. Russell Westbrook dropped his new shoes today. That's your boy. I want to I want to hear your take on how do you like the shoes? You like the style? Have you got a pair? You got to rock them? Anything? What do you think about I, his new kicks? I, I haven't seen them yet. I have not seen them yet. But I will tell you this: um, I'm gonna ask him for some, and then I'm gonna rock them with my sweatpants. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna rock them with my sweatpants. Uh, but I haven't seen them yet. I haven't seen them yet. Let me tell you something. Russ uh, is something about his creativity and his fashion and his style. I know people laugh and pick on it, but but I like it and I respect it because it's him. It speaks about who he is. It speaks about his creativity. It speaks about, um, you know, what he likes. And he doesn't care if you like it or not. That's his swag, that's his feel. And so anytime he puts out his shoe, he's 100% creative with his shoe. Um, and uh, I, I like their just recent shoes. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so I know he's gonna come with us some, some heat, some juice. Uh, and, and so I'm gonna have to get me some so I can rock it with my sweatpants because I, I ain't team Jordan, so I can't wear them on the floor. Right, 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 right. And uh, my other question for you on the basketball side, I mean, now that you guys have kind of gone through the phase of me and the new teammates and just being acclimated in this this offense and I guess defensive scheme as well, what have you guys really focused on ahead of this opening night matchup against uh, the Philadelphia 76ers? Yeah, um, so offensively, I, I knocked that one out first. Just playing with pace. Um, you know, last year we were top 10, you know, in offense and, and pace. We just kind of played with great pace. And so all the guys that's coming in that weren't here last year were on different teams. It is a different pace. It is a different flow. Um, and so just kind of getting used to how it plays, how we play, how we move the ball, how we share, um, how we're trying to score, as you know, in the 115, 120s. Um, and the pace that Russ is going to bring and the pace that I'm going to bring in the second unit, that, that's how we want to play. And then defensively, we really tried to focus on um, Coach uh, Longo. He put a de new defensive scheme against Detroit. Uh, he said, let's keep it simple. Uh, and we switched a lot, and we were just climbing into guys. Um, mm -hmm. And that's something that I wanted to take pride on this year. I can play fast. Y'all know I can play fast, get in the paint. Uh, create for others and myself, but defensively really try to take the challenge and really, you know, challenge a lot of guys dribbling. I, I have the speed. I have the athletic ability. I should be able to do that while I'm out there. And you got to be in great condition. Uh, mm -hmm. And so uh, defensively, just kind of setting that tone, uh, communicating and talking. Um, and, and obviously playing against Philly, you, you got to you gotta deal with Joel. You got to deal with Ben first and foremost. And now they've added shooters. Um, so it's going to be a great matchup. Uh, we're excited about it. Uh, it's one of seven, 72, uh, and so now, you know, the marathon marathon continues. The marathon begins, so we're excited about it. Appreciate you, my brother. Yes, sir. 
Len. Hey, Ish. How are you? Hey, what's up, man? I'm, I'm good, good, man. How about you? I'm good. I'm good. Hey, um, talk a little bit about, you know, you mentioned that Longo incorporated some new schemes on defense. Um, you've been in the league a long time. What What's it going to take for this team, aside from, you know, the schemes itself, you know, being on the same page and switching and all that, what's it going to take for this team to take that step up defensively? And, and what have you seen uh, with from NBA teams that play really good defense? Uh, they take a sense of pride in every possession. I remember when I first came in the league, I used this team as, a, as an example. Um, I wasn't playing much when I first came in the league, but I remember when I was just got traded to Memphis, uh, we went and played Boston. Now we won that game when we beat Boston. But defensively, and that, and that Memphis team I was on, defensively they were really, really good. But I just remember us on that Memphis team and then playing against them. I don't even know either team scored 100 points, but each possession, it was like a drag it out fight. Like they, each guy took pride in like, no, my guy's not scoring. Like, and even if he got beat, the next guy was coming to the help side. Then it was the second side. Like, it was like so much pride. In the defensive end, each individual guy took that, that individual pride. And I think that's probably the biggest thing. Uh, and because the game is so much faster, Glenn, like it's a must that you get back in transition defense. That's first and foremost and build that wall. Once you do that, and everybody's fast now. Every point guard wants to see a seam and he's going, or you got the other point guards who you give them space, they're pulling up from 45 feet. Uh, so you got to get back, that's first and foremost. And then once you get them in the half court, taking pride and getting stops. And then once you get rebounds, that's when we can get into our running game. So I think that's probably the biggest thing when I've seen and just been around the league are the top defensive teams really, really take pride in stopping you. And, and once we realize that when we get stops, we can run more, then that's probably going to make defense even more fun. I, I just remember that little stretch in that second quarter when we were just getting stops running, getting stops running. Um, that is fun. That is fun. It takes great condition, but that that's the part that, that, that we really can get to. You need a bunch of Tony Allens out there, huh? Tony Allen was a heck of a defender, Glenn. I'm telling you, like, he, he took pride in it. And he would gamble some, but he just took pride in, like, yo, this is what I do. And a lot of times, a lot of guys, as we come in the league, we, we think being a good defender is, like, a shame. Like, hey, man, like, you don't think I'm a good offensive player? Uh, but but Tony, he took pride in, in stopping you and took pride in telling you that he was stopping you. And so – when, you, when we, we might can't, you know, obviously Tony Allen is, is a talented defender, so we probably can't get to that level, you know, but if we just take pride, you know, have that mindset and take that pride, then I think th those are the steps that we need to take.